Okay, the bubble sort. Um, the bubble sort, along with the insert sort, are on the specification for the GCSE. Um, there's also the merge sort. You expect it to be able to, to write the algorithm for both merge and insert, but no, uh, for sorry, insert and bubble, but not for merge. You, but you only need to recognize the algo for merge. But the bubble sort um, makes a lot of people very anxious. And indeed, it's this sort of canonical computer science thing slash question slash concept that's used to um, find, you know, discriminate, discern computer scientists from the rest. In particular, it comes up that and abstract data types and, and sorting algorithms show up in interview question. And that led for, to this exchange, which I'm almost contractually obliged to show you as I am a teacher of computer science talking about the bubble salt. Because um, so he's giving a talk at Google. This is in 2008. He's like yet to become president. Um, and the Google guy tells him, we asked, we, you know, we select very smart people and we ask tricky questions. And here's one. What is the most efficient way to sort a million 32-bit integers? A million 32-bit integers. Well, uh, I'm, I'm, maybe I, I, I'm sorry. Maybe no, 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 no. I, I, I think that's not a, I, I, I think uh, I think the uh, the bubble sort would be the wrong way to go. <laughs> And of course, like they go wild when he mentions that. And it, so it would be the wrong way to go because the bubble sort is not the most efficient. If you have a million, no, 32 bit integers, uh, you don't want to use that. In fact, because they are 32 bit integers, you can do a radix sort and look at look at them bit by bit to see which one is larger and so on. But let's let's talk about the bubble sort. So um, let's the bubble sort you bubble through the list until it's sorted. So I've got my little helper function, a little bub function that just goes through the list once, right? For for i in range, length of list minus one. So iterate over all of the elements, except the last one. I'll give myself a bit of space because I'm going to be looking in LST bracket i plus one. So if the element at index y is larger than the element at the next index, I swap them in place. This is something you can do in Python. I don't need to return the list because lists are mutable and passed by reference, which is something you don't need to worry about until you do the A level. Um, case in point, it's going to change the list um, outside of the code, and then I'm going to print. Oh, sorry, not at the end. I'm going to print the list in my function. If I run this, I recommend you do this. I now have this run. It's as if I'm typing code below. So my function bub exists. So let's take a list, um, which I'm going to make from a range of the integers up to 10, or indeed 9, 0 to 9. That's L. And then I'm going to import random, which we all love, and random.shuffle L. Again, it does it in place because lists are mutable and pass by reference, which you don't need to worry about that. This is my unsorted list. Let's bubble through it once. So. What's happened is gone through. So it's moved the three a little bit here, moves the seven a little bit here, and it, find, it finds the nine, if you will. Because once the bubble grabs hold of the largest element, it will push it to the, to the back of the list. It doesn't really matter how it happens or where, but by the first iteration, my largest element, nine, is in place. So really, from this point on, I only need to iterate over that bit, or indeed up to here because of the plus one. Let's do it again. Let's do it. No, the eight is in place. Yeah. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Seven, six, five, four in place, three in place, and now it's sorted. So what happens here is that I'm not going to do any more swaps. So let's put a conditional. So here I'm going to do if um, mm -mm, collapse this. Yeah, a bit, a bit more space because I'm enlarged, and I'm going to have a boolean. You know the, the one swapped. I assume I've not done a swap. And then if I do a swap, I set my swap to true. And then it's highlighted in orange because, excuse me, it's an assignment I've used, but uh, I think you'll find I'm using it here. Uh, and then I'm going to wrap this print, wrap, 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 make it larger, make it larger. Wrap this print in an if, uh, so if swaps. Um, or a tab, now this run it in, 
Um, let's put my list definition up here. Uh, L is list made from the range of up to 10 not inclusive because we start from zero. The 10 first integers, we import the random package. Give myself a nice little empty line here and then random dot shuffle L. Hmm. So I'm going to print L here because why not? And then a bit of space. My bub um, function. So oh, indeed procedure actually. Run it in. So once you've run it in, again go back to the console, you see that's my um, sh um, shuffle list. Got it. L is defined, I don't need to do all that because it's all been done. It's like I'm typing code below, right? Bub L. Now nine's in place. I want to try my new feature, which means I'm not gonna oh, what's happened? Hmm. That's my problem here. I wanted it here, my bad. It happens. Do it again. Nine in place. Eight in place. Seven, six, five, four, and the three, and the two, and the one. And now it stops printing the list, right? Because I call it, it does nothing, and it doesn't even print the list because there's not been any swap. So I just run this again. You get the idea. This is my. Uh, in individual bubble, which is one iteration of the, well, I'll call the in loop by calling bub. And look at that, it's going to put the nine at the end, then the eight. And I keep calling it until it doesn't do a swap, right? So, how about instead of having a, I'm going to, well, no, I can do it, I can do it below. Def bubble. Also takes a list. And while not swapped, sorry, while swapped, as long as I've done some swapped and have some swap to do, so of course because we need we need swap to be true just to get into that loop, right? This is above. Uh, and while swapped, what is it? All of that block, which is going to be indented at the same level, so that's extremely convenient. Maybe not the first line. Maybe not the first line. Look at that. It pasted very nicely. Um, highlighted in orange because, yes, yeah, sorry. Actually, indent that whole block. That's a bit big. It's a line, isn't it? Yeah. We are. Um, swapped is true, and then doesn't really need to do anything. But I tell you what, I'll, I'll still leave the printing um, in here because why not? Cut instead of. So I am in the inner loop and outside after each iteration. Sorry, I'm outside the inner loop. This is my outer loop. This is indefinite and this is my inner loop definite death okay run this in what is going on very good so I now have a fuller bubble function let's collapse this bubble L boo 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 look at that yeah so let's read through it oh no 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 it is it is working That's a whole bunch of print without sorting. Oh no, sorry, it's, it's printing each, iter each iteration of the inner loop, so that's my problem. Now we see the nine moving, and then the eight's in place, then the seven move. Look at this, the diagonal of seven, then the seven's in place. And what's happening to the six? The six was here, and look at the diagonal, the six come in here. Uh, once you start looking for the shape, it's kind of like the matrix, right? You can just see the numbers move. So that five was in here, went here, rip. The four has been kind of shifting a little bit in previous iteration, then finds its place in, locks in, and then we get three, two, one, one, two, three, one, one, two. There's still quite a lot of printing, uh, frankly. So let's just tweak this ever so slightly. Yes, it's, I want to be, I see I've written it as if it's in the inner loop. 
I want to be out of the in loop. And here, let's put a blank line to make that clear. That's my loop. It ends and at the end of my loop, but still in the outer loop, I have my print run this in. I have my list, I bubble L, and then boom, that's a little bit. We don't have each of the inner loop, but we do have the outer loop. And by each outer loop, we're putting whatever is the last element in place. How long is this? We still have four minutes, so let's have let's see if we can improve it. As I mentioned, after each iteration of the outer loop, uh, whichever is the largest element of the unsorted set, uh, because as we move through the algorithm, then only that bit is unsorted, only that bit is unsorted, only that bit is unsorted. So we don't really need in the inner loop to move all across all of those elements. It doesn't really matter on the line on the list of uh, zero to nine. I was about to say one to ten on ten elements, but it does matter when it starts being you know, very large data sets. Although for very large data set, as President Obama knows, we wouldn't be using the bubble sort. So how do I do that? Um, I could have an iterator. Um, instead of one, I'm going to put for J. And every time I have called, I've done the inner loop, I'm going to say j plus equal 1. This is incrementation, right? That means j equal j plus 1. If you want to spell it out. So in bubble, it doesn't really change anything. We can't, we can't see any change, but it's it's gone marginally faster because in inner loops, we'll only iterate over the unsorted part of the list, which keeps getting smaller and smaller. Um, now, can we do it over 100? I wonder. We're going to need to, we're going to, need to make a big console. Um, yeah, let's bubble out. Mm, it doesn't make that. What if I, if I manage to get it all on one line, we might start seeing some visual patterns, which you kind of see here, right? And you see those diagonal movements. I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so this was the bubble sort.